What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and we have another battle for the ILL, that's the Indigo League of Legends. Very snazzy logo that someone in the league came up with. I have included that in this overlay. Um, this is my second round opponent, Ramon. Uh, this was an interesting match to prepare for. I actually ended up dropping Inte for uh, Mamoswine before the match just because his team had a lot of ice weaknesses at the time he had. Uh, Golbat, Tornadus, Chestnut, Aerodactyl, and even um, a Marsh Tomper swamp Swamper, which I could hit with the Freeze Dry for a super effective damage. Uh, so with all those in mind, he also had a couple of ground type weaknesses with Arcanine and uh, Volpix or Ninetales, so I just wanted to make sure I was well covered on that, and Entei didn't really seem to help out that much, um, at least in my next couple of matches, so if I need him, I can pick him back up again. Uh, I did not know what to expect from him, but I did want to bring Terrakion to stop him from setting up hazards or do anything weird um, with Golbat or uh, Smeargle in the beginning. So I'm able to taunt immediately and then switch out into Zapdos. He just rapid spins, probably expecting me to set up my own entry hazards and wanting to break my Focus Sash. But I didn't want to stay in there because I knew he could just spin them away. Um, I hit him with a pretty powerful Thunderbolt, and since this is actually Sturm, my defensive Zapdos, uh, he takes that a lot better than he otherwise would, but that also allows me to make sure that I take that explosion attack a lot better than I normally would, too. Uh, I decided to bring my defensive Zapdos to this battle because um, since I was bringing an offensive Venusaur to the battle alongside uh, Bandit Azumarill and uh, a really offensive Mammal Swine, I just wanted to have something that I could switch in and take hits. Um, now here I was expecting him to go for Spore to try to set up with his spear goal. so I switched in Venusaur to be immune to the spore. I count that correctly. What I didn't count on was him going for Belly Drum right off the bat. Uh, I don't know if he expected me to just leap seed or something, but I didn't really want to mess around with Smeargle, and I knew he no longer had his force just to switch into poison type attacks, so I didn't really need to predict anything right there. I really want to know what he was predicting me to do right there. But uh, I see Aerodactyl come in. I knew if he didn't Mega, he couldn't um, one-hit KO me. I mean, he couldn't two-hit KO me. And if he did Mega, he definitely couldn't one-hit KO me just because of how bulky Mega Venusaur is, even with the Tough Claws boosted Aerial Ace. Uh, so I am able to just two-hit KO Aerodactyl right here, which is very satisfying. I didn't expect to be able to take it out um, without it being a little bit more of a problem for my team. I expected Mammal Swine or uh, my Choice Bandit Azumarill to be the ones to finish it off. Now, he does go out into Tornadus here. I was expecting him to just use Hurricane right off the bat. But he surprises me by going for Substitute, which put me a little bit off guard. I didn't know what to expect from Tornadus using Substitute. I had not seen that before, and uh, I didn't really have any other things to go for than to just stay in the battle and use Electric type moves. But so we see Sub, Toxic, he probably has a Flying type move, and then uh, one more move for filler, maybe Dark Pulse or something like that. But since Prankster allows that uh, sub and Toxic to go off first, it's going to be a little bit annoying to use. Uh, he definitely switched it in at a good time because it scared out my Venusaur, which Toxic would not really work well against at all. So since he's in here, I am taking a lot of damage from Toxic over time, but I don't want to switch out Zapdos without him not having a substitute up. Um, if I switch it out when he has a sub up, then the next thing that I bring in is just going to get poisoned. So I'd rather just make sure he's lowering his own HP through the use of his substitutes. Um, so this is the first time I've battled this type of Tornadus before, and I definitely wasn't expecting it, but I think that I dealt with it pretty decently. So his coverage move does end up being Heat Wave. I don't know if he predicted me to switch right there. Maybe the switch into Mammoth Swine was what he predicted. Um, but it turns out that he's actually really bulky as he doesn't even um, take that much damage from the Thunderbolt app from behind the sub. But now that he can't make a sub, he's too weak. Uh, I can save Zapdos for a little bit later since I am faster than some of the things he's carrying and roost up. Um, now is a good time to go into Mammal Swine since I predicted him to just go for another Heat Wave. Mammal Swine, of course, with thick fat does not take as much damage from Heat Wave even though it is super effective. I guess I was only worried about the burn. But even on this Mammal Swine, if he does burn me, I have access to Freeze Dry. So, not too bad of a situation there. He does take the opportunity to switch out into Banette, which I was not expecting him to have. I was surprised to see that on the team preview because on the team list update, uh, it wasn't updated that he had a Banette. But fortunately, with so much priority on my side of the field, um, 
then that's not really going to be an issue. And since the priority is determined before the Mega Evolution, Mammal Swine is faster than regular form Bennett, so I'm able to just outspeed him after the Ice Shard and take him out with an Earthquake. Uh, life hard Mammal Swine. It's really, really hard, and it's certainly not something to be trifled with. Now, Arcanine comes in. I'm just expecting a Flare Blitz right to the face. We're going to go right on the Latias here, who actually takes Flare Blitz not as well as I thought it would, and plus he gets the burn. Uh, I'd have a decent defensive investment on this Latias. Uh, the burn is a little bit annoying because it cuts down on my longevity, but it actually doesn't end up mattering because I still outspeed. I'm going to be able to hit him with a Draco Meteor and put him in a range where uh, he'll be forced to go for the extreme speed against Azumarill uh, if he wants to do any damage to my Azumarill at all. And he surprises me not only with Citrus Berry here, but he actually does carry Crunch. I haven't seen Crunch on Arcanine in a while. Most of them just carry Flare Blitz, Extreme Speed, Wild Charge, and Close Combat. Uh, so Crunch definitely served him well here as it allowed him to take out my Latias quite easily. And he's actually going to switch out and not wanting to take the Aqua Jet, but since it is banded, nothing at this point is going to be able to take Aqua Jets from my Azumarill. So that's actually going to be a good game. And that was a, a pretty interesting game, I have to say, just because he brought some interesting sets that I wasn't quite prepared for. Uh, but even with the extreme speed coming from Arcanine, not even going to be close, even with the crit to KOing Azumarill. So, while that was a very good game, that means I am now 2-0 in the league. And my next match, of course, will be my first divisional match against Trainer Connor, whom I have battled several times on my channel. So you guys be sure to look forward to that, and I'm sure he'll have the battle for his side up as well. So, let me know what you're thinking of the Indigo League of Legends. Uh, if there's any Pokemon you want me to try to pick up that you don't see me using, let me know as well. I'd be happy to try out some new things. I really like the 10 Pokemon that I chose, and I did like Entei, so we might see him back on the team later. But for now, Mamoswine is doing great. Uh, I think my... After Trainer Connor, I have to battle Lance. So stay tuned for all that, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye now.